now that we have already got introduced to what is relay reads method relay reads method now let us see how to solve a given structural problem using this relay reads method given any problem we can just follow this five simple steps and we can we should be able to get the solution to the any structural problem now here the problem is given to us here there is a bar of length l this is the direction of x and then it is subjected to a point load this is the point load it is subjected to a point load at x equal to l at its free end it is subjected to the point load and there the corresponding deformation due to this point load p is u1 this is also given to us this is given and then the cross sectional area of this bar is a and the material property of this bar is e that is young's modulus and then it has been asked to us to show that at a distance x from the fixed end distance at any distance x from the fixed end the deformation is u time u equal to p by e times x this is what we need to prove and also we need to determine the end deflection here at this free end what is the deflection or deformation and then we have to and then the stress to which the bar is subjected to this also we need to find how much stress this bar will be subjected to so this all this we will do by using relay reads method now what is the first step first step in relay reads method step 1 step 1 is to formulate the potential functional pi equal to strain energy plus work potential this is the statement of potential functional pi equal to strain energy plus work potential now we have seen what is strain energy or what is the expression for strain energy we had seen that the strain energy is half sigma epsilon times volume right half into stress into strain into volume this is what we had seen last time then for this bar element for this bar element let us see what the strain energy will be this volume here this volume for a small element if i take a small element here if i take a small element of say length dx if i take a small element of this length dx then this strain energy for this small volume will be a small strain energy that will be equal to half stress into strain into small volume d volume right but this volume consists of its cross sectional area its cross sectional area a the volume consists of its cross sectional area a and this small land dx so this small volume i can further write this as half stress epsilon area into this small length dx into this small length into this small length dx therefore further i can substitute this sigma using hooke's law as sigma as e times epsilon and we already have this one epsilon here this a let me write it here and this will be dx so finally we get a small strain energy will be a e by 2 epsilon square dx the further this epsilon i can write it as this epsilon i can write it as do u by do x the whole square dx and this will be the strain energy this strain energy or the small strain energy is for this small element of length dx but for this entire bar of length l the the total strain energy now can be written as we will have to integrate this right we will have to integrate this strain energy that is from 0 to l and that will be a e by 2 integral 0 to l do u by do x whole square dx this will be our strain energy for bar element now henceforth if we come across any problem of bar and we have to solve it using relay reads method 
then in place of strain energy we can directly use this expression we won't be deriving this expression again and again we can directly use this as our strain energy expression so here for potential energy functional we got strain energy as a e by 2 integral 0 to l dou u by dou x whole square dx now what will be the work potential work potential last in last lecture or in our last video we have already seen that their work potential can be due to three types of forces body forces surface forces and point forces here we have a point force that is p and the corresponding displacement of this point force p is u1 right so the work potential will be p into u1 and since this work is done on the system this will become negative right work potential will be minus p into u1 so so our total final potential expression for potential functional will be a e by 2 0 to l do u by do x whole square dx minus p into u1 this is our potential functional this will be our potential functional with this we have completed our step one now let us see what is step two we need to assume a trial displacement function which should satisfy the boundary condition and then what are the different trial functions we can assume in step two we need to assume a trial displacement function this trial displacement function can be a polynomial function or it can be any trigonometric function or it can be trigonometric function the polynomial function is of this kind i can assume something like this a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a3x cube and so on and the trigonometric function can be something in terms of sine or something in terms of cos or the combination of this but for this problem for this problem we can very well go for polynomial function but up to what degree we will choose this polynomial function if we look here carefully i cannot just go with a naught because if i substitute this a naught here i won't get any term which is remaining so here the order of this equation is one so at least up to one degree polynomial function we need to choose and therefore our polynomial polynomial function for this problem will be u is equal to a naught plus a one x which is the minimum requirement of course we can go for a 2 x square or a 3 x cube or a 4 x raised to 4 up to any degree but here the minimum degree which is required in our equation is 1 therefore we have to have minimum uh, polynomial function with degree 1 so this will be our polynomial function but this polynomial function we cannot just admit this polynomial function here in this potential function at because it should satisfy the boundary condition the assumed trial function should always satisfy the boundary condition now what are the boundary conditions here and to be more specific this boundary condition should be a essential boundary condition this boundary condition should be essential boundary condition now what are the essential boundary conditions here the essential boundary condition has to do something with displacement so at x equal to 0 here the displacement is 0 since it is fixed at this place at x equal to 0 the displacement is 0 this is the only boundary condition which it has to satisfy so our boundary condition here is at x equal to 0 u should be equal to 0 and with this with this we get if we substitute this in this expression we get we get u will be 0 a naught plus a1 times 0 so this implies a naught should be equal to 0 because this term will vanish so a naught we will get it as 0 so our admissible trial solution will be u is equal to a1 x this will be our admissible trial solution so this is what we need to substitute it here in this equation in place of u we will substitute a1 x but here also we require something for u1 right 
what we will substitute here for u1 where where is this displacement u1 this u this u displacement u is a displacement anywhere at x it becomes u1 at x equal to l right u is the displacement at any x but at x equal to l this u becomes u1 this is the corresponding displacement which we get at x equal to l so at x equal to l at x equal to l we get u as u1 therefore if i substitute this in this equation we will get u1 is equal to a1 times l so this is what we will be substituting in this potential functional that is this is the one expression and this is the second expression which will be substituting in potential functional let us move to step number 3 substitute the admissible trial displacement function into potential energy functional and simplify it so in step number 3 in step number 3 step 3 we will substitute both this equations in our potential energy functional so potential energy functional pi will be equal to a e by 2 integral 0 to l do in place of u i will put this a1 x by do x times square dx minus p into u1 but u1 is a1 l so this will be a1 l so this is what we get now the potential functional after substituting substituting the trial displacement function let us further simplify it let us simplify this further so this can be simplified as a e by 2 integral 0 to l do by do x of a1 x will be a1 the whole square dx minus p a1 l once we integrate this further we should get this as a e by 2 a1 square x from limit 0 to l minus p a1 l right and further simplifying this will give us a e by 2 a1 square l minus p a1 l and this is our simplified potential functional after substituting the trial displacement function so let us move to now step number 4 our step number 4 tells us to minimize this potential energy functional so as to obtain the equilibrium condition which is the most important step step number 4 we will have to minimize this potential energy functional what do you mean by minimizing this we had seen this while while looking at the concepts of variational calculus that this functional can be expressed in terms of its total derivative and then this for the variation in this potential functional to be zero variational in this potential functional to be zero each term when we differentiate this potential functional with respect to the unknown parameters each term must be equal to zero that is that is that is do pi by do a1 should be equal to zero if there was any a2 term here then also do pi by do, do a2 should be equal to zero if there was a3 term here do pi by do a3 should be equal to zero and so on but now here we have only one parameter that is a1 so this we will be not using right so this process is called as minimizing the functional so let us let us let us carry out now minimization of this potential functional so do pi by do a1 this will be equal to a e by 2 2 times a1 l minus p l and this should be equal to 0 right this should be equal to 0 so from this equation we get this 2 and 2 can be cancelled we get a e a1 l is equal to p l further i can even cancel out this l and l and finally we get a1 equal to p by a e right so the value of this unknown parameter a1 turns out to be p by a e therefore what will be our solution we need to substitute this back in our admissible solution our admissible solution was this right so u equal to a1 x u equal to a1 x but a1 is p by ae times x 
p by a times x therefore u equal to p by a times x is the solution to this differential uh, is is the solution to this potential functional and that is what uh, was our first question we had to prove this right show that at a distance x from the fixed end the deformation is u equal to p a by x which we have proved very well here right now further he has asked us to find the end deflection now what is end deflection this is a general uh, expression for the deflection or deformation the end deflection will be at x equal to l right this is the expression for the de deformation at any value of x but the end deflection will be at this point where x is equal to l and in in in, in that case in that case the end deflection and deflection at x equal to l will be u is equal to p by a e times l and you might be very much familiar with this expression from your mechanics of solid subject u is equal to p l by a e this is the end deflection for this bar now and finally they have asked us to find the stresses to which this is subjected to now since we have got a general expression of u that is to determine now the stresses since we have got the general expression for u p by a e times x from this displacement function i can find the strain function strain is change in u by change in x and this will be equal to p by a e p by a e and from hooke's law we know that stress is e times epsilon right but epsilon is this so this will be e p by a e e and e can be cancel out and then the stress finally we get it as p by a again this is a very familiar equation to you from mechanics of solid subject so this is how we have solved this problem of a bar subjected to point load using rayleigh reid's method using rayleigh reid's method